It's the moment you've waited and dreaded for over two years, studying for NBO Part 1. Where it even start? Let's find out. What is up guys, it's Dr. Andreas here with another video. If you're new here to this channel, it's all about helping optometry students, residents, and new doctors with optometry related questions. If you like the video, please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing to the channel. And now, on to the video. Quick disclaimer, I know nothing of what will be on boards. I have no insider knowledge, and these are just my tips collected after months and months of studying for boards and talking to many students ever since. And before I begin, I'll disclose my NBEO Part 1 score from March 2018. I worked very hard for it, and of course, I am an instructor for KMK, which may make it seem like I'm biased toward them, but I do not support them because I work for them. I work for them because I support them. So you won't be surprised when I tell you that most of my studying was from KMK. The videos are fantastic, the book is comprehensive, and you really don't need much more unless you want to supplement it. Want more awkward anatomy pictures? Sure, maybe open the Remington book. They have some great pictures. Uh, I particularly like the ocular blood supply pictures. Do you want more questions than the 4,000 plus that are on KMK? Then maybe consider OptoPrep or look back at your old optometry school notes. I did buy into the hype and purchase OptoPrep when I was a student. I did find it helpful. However, it's not the best when it comes to taking practice tests because they're just random questions taken from the test bank. So you're not getting that uh, accurate mix of questions from each topic. But still, OptoPrep was a good source for casually answering questions when you feel like it, you know, during a slow day in clinic. But you don't have to get it. KMK has more than enough questions. Either way, KMK should be at the core of your studying. When should I start studying? This answer will vary, but you generally want to start early so you have enough time, but not too early that you burn out. Of course, starting early is not the only variable. You also have to think about how often you're studying. So for example, eight months of studying where you're starting off once a week and building up over time may be less stressful to you than four months of studying, but having to start with three times a week. Meanwhile, you have your crammers who prefer the less time but higher volume of studying. The truth is everyone is different, which make this, makes this question so hard to answer. For the March exam date, most people in my class on average started studying in October. A few others, including me, started in August, and there are even ones that started in December and did fine, although you may be pushing your luck any further. So to answer this question as objectively as possible, here's what you should do. If board is less than eight months away, start day one of making your plan as soon as possible. I didn't necessarily say start studying eight months before the test, which is what I did. I said make your plan because life will happen and this is probably the most important test of your life. So you want to make sure that you're well prepared for it. Because like the goat Kyle himself says, this is not a test of knowledge, but a test of preparation. Creming may have worked in the past and may work to some extent, but there is just so much content on this test that you really want to start early with a plan. Trust me. Here are the things to do on your day one of your NBEO part one prep. Make a rough individualized plan, gauge how realistic is that plan, and execute plan and modify as needed. I'm sorry if this sounds like a business seminar, but let me break these three ideas down even further. For your individualized plan, here's an example of what I would recommend. You should definitely start by watching the videos. You really wanna start off like this because you're eased into the process and because you can get big picture concepts quickly with Kyle and others to motivate you and help you walk through the different topics and get you pumped over studying for boards. Write down notes on the book as needed, especially when they refer to specific sections. Priority number one is the videos because one, it will help you follow along better during the KMK weekend live lectures, which those can range from September to February, depending on the school. And two, it will speed up your reading so much. There's no point if, for example, you're trying to dissect every single step of the coronal detergestions pathway in the book. You know, right ions go this way, ions go that way, pump this way, etc. When Kyle can just simplify it all in one video. After you're done with all the videos, go back and read the Kim K book. Like, actually read it. Everything is fair game on board, so by reading the book, you'll get the most bang for your buck, 
because KMK does so much research depending on what is on the NBO matrix and compiles them into one source. When should you have the book read by? Ideally by January, as recommended by KMK and by most upperclassmen you'll talk to, that's because it's a clear target. It's the start of the new year, which gives you about 10 weeks left of working on weaknesses, taking practice tests, and other supplemental stuff before you tackle on boards. Now, I know the book is huge, right? When I took boards in 2018, it was around 1,100 pages, which can seem very overwhelming. But little by little, you can chuck away at it. Some students found that by taking the books to Staples or Office Depot and then splitting it into smaller books based on categories is much more manageable psychologically. Like the BV section, for example, it can be made into a book that is only like 50 pages, right? It seems more manageable for you to say, I will get through the BV book this week. Whereas I read 50 pages of the gigantic book that I have to carry with me everywhere it is not too motivating. Now I didn't do that, it's just a suggestion that I like, but I did do something similar. This is an Excel sheet I made for that 2018 book. I know the table of contents looks much different now. To the left are the sections, the big eight are in green, and to the right, you'll see white boxes. Every box was worth 10 pages. For example, histology is chapter one, there's 39 pages, so I have four boxes there. When I would finish reading 10 pages, I would pencil in the box that I completed it. It took me about an hour to finish each box. This kept me motivated as the more boxes I filled, the more I could visualize my progress and want to do more. And I did the same to the videos. I made similar blue boxes to the right and each one is worth 30 minutes. Whether you make boxes like I do, split the book in pieces like others have done, or find a different way to motivate yourself, try to get the book done ASAP since it is the most time consuming part of your whole study plan. So you can move on to the next bullet point. After the book is done, take the first two KMK practice tests, dot, 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 and review them. This is key, guys. By that, I mean after you've set a timer, taken a test in the simulated test environment, so like in your room with no distractions, for example, you're going to take a break, and whenever you're ready, you're going to review every single question, even the ones you got right. Those answer explanations are gold because they won't just tell you why your answer is right, but also why the other ones are wrong and give you a much better understanding of the topic in case you get asked a different question uh, in the future, but with similar concepts. That way, you learn from your mistakes and you learn from questions that you got right, but only because you narrowed down the other choices and guessed between the remaining answers. After you've watched the videos, read the book, and taken the practice tests, you'll be able to see what your strengths and weaknesses are and modify accordingly. Did you do poorly on optics? Do more optics problems. Has it been months since you read Anatomy and now you're rusty? Review that. Was posterior segment disease easy? Let that go for a bit and work on others. Do you feel like you're just meh on everything? Maybe review the big eight again. Basically, this time is for you to adapt, modify, and overcome. This is also the point where you want to start assessing your knowledge a lot more. You've passively read through, the, through all the information. Now you want to keep actively reviewing with flashcards, precise practice questions, maybe throw in some opt prep if you, if you really want to. Essentially, you're past the stage of just reading the information. Now you want to condition yourself for the actual skill of taking boards. You know, building your stamina by answering questions back to back and narrowing down answer choices. Because let's face it, you've got a 370 question marathon coming up in March, so you need to be sure you're staying conditioned. But as long as you just prepare accordingly, I'm sure you'll dominate it. Before I move on, let me remind you that if you have any questions about anything that I've covered so far, please comment below and I'll gladly answer. Also like and subscribe. Should I take the KMK booster course and crash course? So I didn't take those two courses at the time, uh, partially because I wasn't aware of this value, but I did watch them a year ago as a way to prepare myself to teach at the KMK Live Lectures, and they're good guys. The booster course is more for specifically targeting form, ocular anatomy, and ocular disease in more detail. Those are the three topics that KMK has found that students struggle with the most. Then there's the crash course, which I think is awesome because it's designed as a form of rapid fire Q&A, giving you a quick review of a large amount of content in a short period of time. And the crash course is a good idea to take a little bit before the test, especially as a way to quickly screen which topics you're rusty on. By the way, when you get to part two boards, and you will, the crash course is fire. It's so good. But more on part two in a future video. One last thing to think about for the week or so before you take boards is to just rest up, guys. It can be tempting to try to cram as much as you possibly can in those last few days, but if you put the work in and study for so long, it'll show when you take the test. And the last thing you need is to burn out right before you take the test and then not think straight. 
One piece of advice you need to hear is to make sure you get a good night's sleep two nights before boards. And that is because we know that the night before boards, you're gonna be too anxious to sleep. I know I'm glad I slept well two nights before boards because the night before boards, I got Wendy's with a theory that the greasy food will put me to sleep and I got food poisoning. I don't think it was the deadly kind, but I guess the mild to moderate food poisoning mixed with anxiety gave me so much stomach pain at like 9 p.m. that by 4 p.m. I was crying in the fetal position at the edge of my bed. Not good, I slept four hours and showed up to boards like a zombie. I was so mad and so groggy, but I prepared for eight months, so I wasn't just gonna let that set me back. Those Wendy's burgers were good though. Basically, I'm recommending that the night before boards, you eat something healthy and go to bed early. Okay, so we've covered the plan of study that I recommend, but notice that I say it's a rough individualized plan because you're gonna have to plan when to do all this, right? Will you binge watch all the videos in a month? Will you read 50 pages of KMK a week? Will you watch videos while on the treadmill? Will you do practice questions throughout your whole study plan in clinic? Or will you do them all from January until boards? All of these questions are up to you to answer based on your preferences and how you feel like you can retain information the best. Now, if you go back to our three-step outline of what to do on day one, we covered making a plan. But unfortunately, you're not done planning. The reason is one of the biggest reasons how students don't set themselves up for success is that their timeline is just not realistic. For example, they may think they can get the videos done in 10 days, but then they realize at the end of those days that they're not even halfway done, which then throws off the rest of their schedule. Since you want to avoid overestimating your ability to get through studying in X amount of time, here's how you can gauge how realistic your plan is. Ask yourself these questions. First question, how many minutes of videos can you watch in a week? Because there's 36 hours in the normal KMK course, but depending on how often you pause and rewind, how fast you're playing it, one times, two times, it could take you more or less time. For me, 2x was too fast, so I would watch at one time speed and found that I could typically mentally handle watching about two hours of videos at a time, but with note taking and reflecting, it would take me like three hours to do so. So 36 hours of videos really meant 54 hours for me, spread out over 18 days. And I knew I wasn't realistically going to watch videos for 18 consecutive days, so then I guesstimated that it should take me about a month to uh, reasonably get all the videos done. Next question, how many pages of the book can you read in a day or week? So going back to the, my boxes method, I quickly found out over the course of the first week that on average, it took me two hours to read and completely understand 10 pages. Yep, I know, that's slow. I'm just a slow reader, but you see how with that math, it would take me 220 hours to read the whole book. Now, it didn't take me that long because the non-big eight, I read twice as fast because I felt like I didn't have to learn or memorize every single detail. With that said, I would not ignore the non-big eight because it's still collectively a significant portion of your score, especially anything in the non-big eight that is related to optometry. For example, the neuroscience section, which was shockingly my, my lowest score in my report, actually has a lot of info on optic nerve pathologies, which of course is super important to know, so expect that to be in the test. Maybe go as far as you consider it, neuroscience as a kind of big eight. But I digress, even still, accounting for the faster speed of reading the non-Big 8, I estimated that it would take me like 180 hours to read the entire book. That's the equivalent of studying two hours a day for 90 days. Or if you have less time than that, three hours a day for 60 days. You see why you need to figure this all out early? Can you imagine if you want to finish the book by January, but it's already December? <laughs> if you read at my pace, you would have to read six hours a day for that entire month to finish the whole book in that month. And December is a holiday month, yikes. <laughs> now, if that's you, all hope is not lost because there are some schools out there where the students open the book in early February and still somehow manage to pass boards. To that, I say bravo to your school, but I still bet that those six weeks were probably the worst six weeks of your life. Anyways, final questions. How long are you planning on studying for boards? Is that time long enough based on your study speed? And have you accounted for any possible contingencies? This one is key because so many plans get sidetracked because students forget to account for the three weeks that they're gonna have to stop reading the KMK book because they have finals or they know they're gonna visit their family for a winter break and won't have time to study. Or you live in Florida and there's a hurricane coming but you didn't modify accordingly. In my case, for example, Hurricane Irma set us back a few weeks. At Nova, we had Helltober, which is when, for some reason, whether you were a first, second, or third year, October was always the worst because you had an ungodly number of exams. If you have something similar, plan accordingly. 
Of course, there will always be things that can you that you never account for. Just ask the fourth years who were supposed to take boards in 2020. Hug a fourth year, guys. They've been through a lot. All right, last thing on that three-point list we talked about is simple and is what you'll be doing throughout your board study. Execute the plan you put in place and modify as needed. Are you a month in and you've realized that you haven't watched as many videos as expected? Speed it up. Make that a priority. Did you find out that your parents are visiting next month? Uh, do more work now so you don't have to do it then. It all goes back to what you've been doing throughout optometry school, and that is time management. So there you have it, guys. Sorry the video was so long, but there was just so much to talk about. Uh, and I felt like while I was writing the script for this video that I just kept adding tips that I would recall from when I took boards. If there's a question you have that I didn't answer in this video, please comment below. That way everyone sees it and can benefit from it. Chances are someone else is thinking that question too. And when you comment, you are in a sense supporting my channel. So I would be glad to answer any questions in the comment section below. That's it for today. Keep your eyes out for a future video where I'll cover part two. I don't know when that'll be, but I'll link it below when, the, when it's out. And when you've crushed this test and want to take part three, I have two videos about part three that are already published on YouTube. Remember, if you like this video, please hit the like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.